Dark Cloud, a game you either thought was a Zelda ripoff while you bought Billy Hatcher for your Nintendo GameCube, or a game you know is good. Gotta include the PS2 people, right? It actually sold well in the States, and just tanked in Japan. <laughs> it's Level 5's debut game. They made lots of awesome games, but uh, you probably never played them if you're a Nintendo boomer. All right, pal, hop to it. Why should I care? You might be saying aloud at this time. Well, how many games do you know? that open with Vor. Oh. Oh. My mom watches my videos, oh no! Now Dark Cloud got compared up and down the aisle to every single thing it wasn't when reviews hit the web. Now to be fair, Dark Cloud is the Dark Souls of the year 2000, but setting that aside, let's take a look. Dark Cloud is Ocarina of Time. Nope, mm-mm. Dark Cloud is copying from Act Razor. And Vagrant Story? No? A few years too late, but let's end the silly comparisons and just shoot straight. Not that straight. So Tone, that's Tone, watches his entire village full of the only people he's ever known explode. Dark Cloud is something of a happy game. Of course they're not gone. None of it's gone. The Fairy King sealed everything in orbs called Atla, and you've gotta delve about 80 floors a dungeon across five different areas to put the world back together. Yeah, it's a lot to do and figure out, and boy howdy they love tutorials for their many game systems. And Buddy left it all this string bean here. Okay. I can't make skinny jokes like looking like Bugs Bunny. It's not as cool a game as it lets on with the action scenes and the intro sequence, but it ends up being really fun. More fun for me than your typical puzzle dungeon hat kid game. It basically turns monotony into addiction. But how? The trick is, Tone sucks. Big time. He's got no health. He's got a little thirst gauge that's always running out. Jeez, dude, put a nipple on a bottle already. And he's got a crappy little knife. Kid needs power-ups. That's the concept that underpins the game. Collect lots of upgrades for Tone and eventually your party to get big strong. The second layer is the individual dungeon busy work. Rooms may be randomly generated, but there's always another chest to open, another piece of the town to collect, another enemy to awkwardly sort of interact with in 3D space. God, I hate these stupid bats. No! I didn't pack antidotes for the love of fuck! That's how it hooks you. You got poisoned to death, bro. You're gonna lose to a single bat? A single bat? I will erase your name from history. So dungeon delving's a huge part of the game, most of the playtime, in fact, but downtime is still significant. You'll usually head back to town with a pile of buildings and assemble them in the top-down placement mode. Now, the devs were extremely hilarious comedy men, right? So you can get special bonuses, including an extra attack ability, like Link getting the hurricane spin, for putting the town together the right way. So that isn't happening. But I did make this town look like trash. And there's all kinds of funny characters, like these two. Wow. That's evocative. Who knows what their story is? Oh, they're throwing hands. Oh, dear God. They make for some of the best moments in the game. You know, the poor villagers can't give you much for saving them, but they'll make you a nice soup. It's a heartwarming gaming moment. No wonder that fell by the wayside, am I right, guys? Sometimes they'll threaten to jump off the roof. Get down from there, Grandpa! <sighs> He's such a pain. Grandpa, no! And who could forget? <gasps> oh my God. The game plays with the concept at least a little, like the first stage is pretty cut and dry, but Town 2 needs you to find the river in the nearby dungeon to connect to the tree, which was all dried up and crusty. Boom, saved a life. It's admirable that Level 5 wrapped gameplay and progression together this way. It gets the player way more into the world and characters than they might otherwise. You have to talk to everybody, both to figure out how to recreate the town and to view the little events every completed location rewards the player with. Not to mention the power-ups in chests you unlock for completing each house. Ah, but we haven't talked about the party, the... one of the parts of Dark Cloud. So it all starts with this cat. It's a good cat. But uh-oh, Tone fed it something. Why? Why would you ruin a perfectly good cat with this necklace monstrosity? Xiao, the Bloody Roar character, I guess, can jump. She's really good at doing no damage and chipping away at enemy health for 10 centuries, but you can kite with her, or spend like five hours off screen leveling up her weapon. Go ahead, I dare you. Next is Goro. I like how Tone reacts to this guy, like, whoa, you're like three me's. 
Jesus, Tone, that's insensitive. Goro hits switches with his hammer and exists so you can throw your controller every time a dungeon floor forces you to use him. Also, he told his dad's ghost that he hates him. What a dick. Ruby's the good side character with that same cutting potential as Xiao, but pretty good damage overall. She's an efficient, low investment side character and a genie, that's neat. She also opens switches, but whatever, she's cool. Mildly adult though, literally gets summoned out of her lamp and assumes it's a booty call. I like video games. There's a rabbit that replaces Xiao by hovering so he's automatically valuable. Yes, I will use my platform to spread my bile. And he's got a gun, even a flamethrower, not bad. Now he ended up replacing a cooler character during development, but what you gonna do? The game was clearly pushing the tech and probably the budget. And finally, the character I could not wait to get to, Ungaga. Oh. So you call them Ooga Booga. Tone, Shao, Ruby, Ooga Booga. Ooga Booga the Desert Warrior, whose tribe is run by Chief Bonka. I think that's pretty reasonable. I don't have any complaints. You don't get it, K-Bash. And Gaga's a serious character with real emotion written into his backstory. He suffers from deep inadequacy and his dialogue reads not unlike a depressing Twitter feed. You need to take him more seriously. <laughs> Gotta give him credit, he's fun enough to play, and his unique path block remover takes at least three times longer than the average one, so I'd say that's a win. Now, I mentioned the game will force you to use certain characters sometimes. To extrapolate, the gameplay is full of quirks and challenges that might end up forcing players out. I thought it was pretty good for a PS2 pseudo action RPG dungeon crawler roguelite hybrid, so I guess that's where the complications come from. Looking at my footage, you might think this is a fun and brainless action game of sorts. No. No, it's got tons of menu management, and hey, whatever, I'm just saying it gets a little annoying having to pause everything, to scroll through the menu, to drag some repair dust onto your weapon so you don't lose everything you ever worked for. Oh, I didn't get into that yet. Dark Cloud's kind of infamous for weapon breaking. I mean, so many weapons might as well be made of a stiff chalk. They bust after like five enemies, and you cannot allow that to happen. You don't level up in this game, almost all of your stats are tied directly to your weapon. If it shatters, it's gone. Now I pay pretty close attention to stuff like this, but can you imagine grinding 10 floors of dungeon, breaking your Omega Sword, and losing 20 hours of weapon level progress in an hour of in-game time because you got a little tired? You looked away for a sec. Unbelievable. Your other stats are those power-ups I mentioned, gourds and health increases, and they're fine, but until your health is high, and until you suck up enough gourds to hoard water like a camel, you're buying in bulk from the shop. Piles of bread, water, dust. The game is made for accountants and Monster Hunter players. Otherwise, dungeons play out pretty well. You load in, run around collecting Atla, opening chests. <laughs> and sometimes going to bonus versions of any given floor, called back rooms, for better treasure but stronger enemies. Dying isn't a problem if you bought the right items, and the worst punishment for wiping is losing half your money. Sucks, but like... Have you tried just not dying, sweetie? I have to stress, the game is fun and actually worth your time, I think, but please pack the necessary items. The game speed is slow enough. You can speed up with this feather, best item in the game, but if you can't cure status ailments, well... Wow. You know, this is not unlike my YouTube career. <laughs> the only real differences between dungeons, aside from aesthetics, are enemies and the various paths to lower floors, and they're tied together. So enemies. I don't have much to say. They're all blasé, vapid health sacks. Some of them do quirky and annoying things, but they're not much of a problem once you get better weapons. But to open the doors to lower floors, you need to kill a random enemy on every floor for the drop. What this means is you have no way of knowing where the key is, so you churn through a lot of corpses for it. I mean, sometimes it's the first enemy. You Usually it's somewhere away, far away. Because you don't level with experience, there's no reason to clear whole floors of anything but the town pieces once you have the key. So you know, feel free to speedrun once that's done. At least the designs are pretty neat. A lot of tubby dragon types wandering around, you know, statue dog. Man, they even put bulls <laughs> in the game. You can imagine some party members are better at fighting some things, but you will not catch me dead investing more time into these absolute mutants. You might think it's a skillless kind of game, and a little bit, but there's a lot of nerdy stuff under the hood you can't immediately see in the footage. Like most enemies need to be approached from certain angles for safety's sake. If you do a charge attack, you can abuse invincibility frames to survive against a lot of the game's nonsense stuff. Spacing ends up being really important to dodge some hitboxes. Like for these bomb enemies, you need to use a range character, or be the Chad mechanic enthusiast and hit them 
Just so. Look at my skills. Puns exist in many dungeons as well, so you can invalidate tough fights by constantly shimmying in and out of the water. And I think those mechanics taken as a whole tell this engaging narrative of survival compounded by the flowchart automation instilled in the player who's constantly refilling on water, minding their health and weapon durability. Which is great, because bosses are fun, they all have fun gimmicks and all require a second character to beat. Never-ending story ripoff needs to be shot out of the sky, uh, you break Squatch's toes. The Ice Queen sucks. To be fair, she was so tough, I learned to exploit the AI with well-timed ranged attacks. Old games, am I right? You know, the rest really aren't that memorable, but there's a reason for that. See, the game has this whole weapon upgrade system that underlies the entirety of the game. Like, you can be working towards the best weapon from the very start. I didn't until halfway through the third dungeon. Uh-oh. And since weapon levels are your levels, you really should invest in at least one character, probably Tone. So after endless guide consultation and like five hours of grinding and a lot of fishing, wow, I hate fishing, I got the Chronicle Sword. It's pretty good. Really good. Kind of ruined the entire experience. Good. God damn it. But enough about mechanics. Everyone loves a good story, right? You know, it probably is better than some of this stuff flooding around the PS2 era. I'd class it more as funny and quirky than purely heartwarming. I mean, it's trying, but I'm having a hard time divorcing Genie Vor and Ungaga Booba Suck from the big important moments. It's all I can think about. The trick is, if you want characters to matter, they should probably be doing things. But that was tough on the PS2, and there's so many other characters getting screen time. It's aspirational, though. It's trying and it is charming. It reminds me vaguely of Chrono Trigger in that sense. Everything from the beginning to the end is written with the weight of despair, but it's a hopeful game about overcoming challenges by setting out to do them. You literally go and struggle and do and get rewarded for it. In that sense, regardless of the script or the constant attempts to be emotional that don't work as well for me as maybe they would for others, the game's story is meaningful and it knows how to have fun. You don't rebuild the moon town when you go there. In video games. Now you put a giant flying Aztec robot thing together, fly to confront the genie like it's Gundam or Dragon Ball or something. Look at that, that's some sick. Anyway, props to Dark Cloud for ending with a twist dungeon where you collect fragments of the past instead of a village to unlock a long lore dump that contextualizes some of the characters and events referenced prior. That's how you know it's good. They put a meaningful and interesting spin on the final area while saving on rendering time. God bless. But what's a twist dungeon without a twist villain? In the first dungeon, you have to battle a guy Twitter would not shut up about if he were created today. He pisses off and both he and the Dark Genie don't bother you at all until the end game where, okay, you didn't really think this tubby lump was the final boss, did you? Turns out the Dark Genie is a malicious spirit that jumps from host to host, possessing people, so no killing brown shirts this time. What can you do? And you've got to fight Beautiful Boy in a two-stage boss fight that's really fun. I'm having fun! It ends how you'd expect. It's a cute game, a lot of work, but pretty enjoyable once you break in, as it goes. Good times. Can I get the crotch grab again? There she goes! Oh, shit! Hey, it's K-Bash. Special thanks goes out to my $4 patrons, whose names are on the screen. The show's on its way somewhere good, thanks to the community's generosity. And special thanks goes out to my extra generous patrons, who are... Andy Blarg. Azero. Basement Dweller. Beverage Crisp. Boha. Brandon. Brios. Cal. Can I cuss on here? Caesar T. Cordant. Chris A. Cody Golden. Corgi the Lad. Couch Moba. CW Glassworks. Kyle Lapreed. Daddy Dagoth. Dakota Storm Jones. Dondium. Dara. David Castillo. Den Het. Dylan Coffey. Annex. Aesthetico. Exa. Frankenstitch. Glyph Seeker. Guard Corey. Gucci Plant. Hatsune Miku's Crack House. Harkaj. Heman Gaiman Station. Huey. Ingenious Clown. Ice Kyle. Jason Lasky. Jaden. J. Deus. John Weber. Joke Frog. Keegan Too Cool. Keith Myers. Clocked. Crayden. Crazy Dark Chocolate. Latrix. Laundry Mom. Lego Sid. Lawn! Magical Madman. Markules. Maximilian Wolfgang Niver. Milky Moo Official. Michelanius. Mr. Dodongo. Nito Torpedo. Old Burgle. 
Old Man Cranberry, Only LK, Pink Peacock, Quasar McDougal, Quillworth, Quinn, Reasonable Willow, Reggie Rodriguez, Ricochet Frame, Siren Smells Good, Salty Smasher, Sekai No Awarida, Shod, Slagathor, Sleepy Wabbit, Special Children, Spooky Grimalkin, Sublime Cataclysm, Super Sandwich Guy, TFY Lex, The Big Bubby, The Salt Knight, They Call Me Gambit, Thrips Heart Drop, Travis Edwards, Twiddle Chungus, V01156, Venom, Viewers Like You, Vic, Walter Taggart, Waposa, Weeb Trash, Well Shit, Yay Kundo, Zachary V, Zanasso, Zane the Impure, Zane the Pure, Zed Slayer Gamer. If you'd like to help support the show and make it even better, check out my Patreon. We've got all kinds of goals and lots of rewards in store. Stay tuned for more. K Bash out.